Vaigurjika Khalsa, Vaigurjika Fateh, and welcome back to our weekly discussion show uh, on Zeek Channel from the Ilford studio. Now, today we will be talking about uh, crime, whether that's financial crime, fraud, scamming. Now, recently, and especially in the news, we've been finding a lot of public have been going through various types of financial crime. And in order for us to get some tips, in order to get some knowledge, we have brought an expert guest with us today on the panel to discuss those areas. So I would like to welcome Mr. Hardeep Singh Sira, who is a Vaigurjika Khalsa. Vaigurjika Fateh. Now, um, Mr. Sira is a financial crime officer. So Mr. Sira, tell us, uh, what do you do? Right, Vaigurjika uh, Khalsa, Vaigurjika Fateh to everyone. Um, uh, so I've uh, been working in the financial industries for about more than eight years, uh, working in the uh, financial crime team. So I worked in a various different financial institution um, okay. and uh, doing a lot of various uh, uh, working in the financial crime team, working in uh, different roles, investigators, uh, specialists, and again also uh, especially the uh, financial uh, banking side mm -hmm. of, uh, of, 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 the, of the teams. Okay, so in regards to, we're, today we're talking about crime, fraud and scams. Now, there are three different topics in themselves. Now, could you explain to the viewers, as well as myself, what is the difference? Right, so with the, uh, coming uh, with the topic with the fraud, scam, and um, uh, now these are, these are two different things. Yeah. Now, um, a lot of people doesn't know about uh, what can be a fraud and what can be a scam whenever they call up the bank so whenever they kind of the details personal details get compromised yes. or even if they if the card details or the bank details are compromised what to do on the those situations how to deal with it and uh, what are the right steps to basically get in touch with the bank get in touch with the police uh, and save kind of time and making sure um, you getting there first before the forces can actually steal your money from the account okay. so uh, starting with the with the scam so scam is nothing but uh, for example if you see a s website or if you see um, a, a buyer and a seller say saying uh, a seller is selling for example a car for yes. example a vehicle and um, so you made a purchase you you speak to the person um, over the internet and then provide your details and you agreed for a payment and then so you yourself made a transaction, say, yeah. for example, for argument's sake, the, the transaction was for 6,000 and you bought a new, bought, bought a car, used one. Mm. And then later on, um, the seller agreed that, okay, you meet to, ma to, to me in this point of location, this is my office. And when, you, when, the, when the buyer goes to the place and it's out of nowhere, it's nothing, that, that place doesn't exist. That means the person, the buyer has been a victim of a scam. It's not okay. fraud. It's a scam. Reason being, the account holder has actually provided details to the to the to the seller, so it's the the money has been gone out with using the the account holder's consent. Okay, so that's a scam. That's a scam. So, okay. coming to the fraud. So, as simple terms, if a transaction happens on the account, and if the account holder doesn't recognize the transaction, if the, if the money has gone out without the account holder consent that mm. means it falls under fraud okay where bank will certainly be able to kind of look into the details they will more than happy to investigate it however also in terms of scan there are different various uh, reasons where you can basically uh, kind of points where you can actually approach you can certainly call up your bank and um, go through various means so this is the main difference between a fraud and a scam so from your experience, um, if you'd like to tell the viewers, if you could give us one or two scenarios which the common man would generally face when it comes to financial crime. Sure, absolutely. To start off with, uh, now as we know, uh, Christmas is uh, nearby, Fast New Year, so everybody would like to you know, purchase uh, Christmas presents or purchase um, New Year presents. So nowadays uh, we don't actually go to a virtual uh, kind of we don't go to a shop per all online. physically. So all online. Yeah. So the common uh, num uh, fraud is a uh, is a is is an online fraud called a card not present, where okay. where an account holder provides uh, the card details. For example, so example their sixteen digit card number, mm. their sort code account number, uh, the CVV number, which is called the. Um, 
security three digits at the back and the expiry date so these are the main details sure yes uh, so again coming back to the online fraud the tips that I can provide you the example that I can give you is again making sure uh, using a secure websites okay this is the first thing to look for uh, mm -hmm. uh, not just going to uh, any any website uh, and just uh, providing your details uh, so what, what does the general uh, member of public look for when they're going to a secure website so the the things that they have to look for firstly uh, on the web page on the, or the web address they have to look for the HTTPS so if the website is just called HTTP and the address or it's www dot uh, whatever the website is and if there's no S there that means the website is not secured is not very it's not advisable that you provide your okay. card details or your bank account details there because anybody can hack that website so that, and provide that's the a details. very useful tip to our viewers Absolutely. where when they're securely browsing to ensure the domain name has a HTTP with an S on the back of it because the S stands for secured website sure absolutely um, also with the other kind of uh, internet fraud that's happened that's happening at the moment uh, which is very common as well yes. especially with the uh, elderly people now there has been a lot of people who's been victim of fraud yes. uh, especially uh, people are, who are targeting is the elderly age group about 50 55 so what happens is uh, so you get a call, a random call from um, your network provider. Mm. Uh, for example, this is one of the cases that I want to discuss. Yes. Uh, what happens is they um, receive a call from, for example, BT, British Telecom, as we uh, as we know, a lot of people have got BT, uh, BT accounts, yes. account internet on their in, in the in, in their home mm. place. So they they call and they say, okay, Mr. So and So, you have. Um, some problem has your internet well the first question will be has your internet being slow mm. the common answer would be most of them would be say yes I've been facing it uh, and my internet's always been slow okay so we found that there's some kind of a virus that's affected your internet so what we need to do is we need to kind of run a, a virus scan on your computer diagnostic yes. absolutely so what so, they do is so just yeah. for my understanding and yeah. some of the viewers so the questions they ask um, we don't know who it is on the other phone could be a scam or fraud whichever way now they'll ask very reassuring questions absolutely so the reassuring questions are, are mostly are very common which the answers you're looking for will be uh, mostly a yes because mm. and they sound so professional they you will think that you know somebody is calling you from BT because um, so what they do is the next steps they do is they ask you to switch on your computer mm -hmm. and then what they do is they take the remote access of your computer so that you get a pop-up screen on on the computer and asking oh can you can, kind of read your IP information can you read your co mm. computer domain mm. and so that they can actually try to copy that and again take take the control of your computer so once they've actually done that uh, later on what they do is they they said okay we have completed the diagnostics everything is perfect now so what we need is for the for the diagnostics for the virus scan we'd have to pay a minimum of uh, say 20 pounds or whatever the funds they they ask you for or maybe 200 pounds that you owe us yeah, absolutely. so what they do is they ask you to kind of um, log into a website which is again operated by the um, remote access by yeah. the by the fraudsters yeah. where the account holder or the or the or the or the, or the, uh, or the person start giving the information okay so once the uh, uh, starts the person starts giving information like the 16 digit card number or sort code account number then they ask for your security passwords mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then they ask for your pin number so, ne wow, okay. so never ever provide any information there uh, and then also to what banks does is for security sake now banks are again would like to stay ahead of the fraudsters so they have their own uh, security in place and mm. then they send you out a text message saying was it was it you to confirm that this particular transaction is genuine and this information also is also known by the, the is known i mean the fraudsters know these information mm. these are some of the common things that again the the victim would know uh, with the fraud fraudsters will know say yeah. um, they'll reply the information as yes uh, confirm this yeah. was the transaction say confirm yes and the payment that goes through and later on <clears throat> then there will be some more wire transactions fraud so this is one of the examples that I can provide you which was which mm. is very common well that, that's interesting because that leads me on to my next question which yes. is uh, elderly people 
especially uh, over 60s, let's say, yes. over 65 according to AGUK, um, become a, a very large number of the target community for fraud scams. Absolutely. Now, why is that? Uh, mostly because, uh, uh, as we know, um, there's a lot of lack of knowledge on, uh, again, computers is something which has been uh, used by, uh, which has not been very long. I mean, it's been after 1995, and again, uh, they're not actually compute, compute, they don't have more knowledge mm. on the computer, uh, and they, they're not very, um, I would say, tech, techno freak, so as, la as now, as you know. So that's the reason why they target them. Yes. The reason why they target them again is, again, um, they know that these are the um, people will, who will definitely have some money in their account where mm. they probably might receive some pension funds. Pension funds, yeah. yeah and they might receive some kind of, uh, mm. they might have some uh, kind of uh, houses that would have sold and mm. they would have some savings. So we have some kind of uh, deposits on the account. Mm. So that's the reason why they kind of morely target the uh, age group, which is more than 60 years old. And again, um, and and that's the only and they, these are all venerable people who, Vulnerable, who, yeah. who who doesn't actually know what's actually happening and then they just kind of be a victim of fraud. Mm. So if someone's been a victim of fraud, say an elderly person, they may they should be organisations out there who can support them. Now, what kind of organisations can an elderly person or anyone who it may be a victim be able to contact? Right. The first thing I would cer certainly um, request the uh, victims what they need to do is. Um, always make sure now to get to the teams I'll explain you what what can be done to avoid uh, mm -hmm, anything mm -hmm. any further uh, fraud yes. happening on the account now the first thing that you need to do is always make sure uh, you're calling the number which is mentioned on the back of your card yeah secondly um, again if you received a call from BT or well, probably Virgin Mobile or, mm. or Sky yes uh, whoever so your internet provider is make sure you actually dial their original number and let them know again they will definitely confirm that they, they were, it's not them who actually call them because mm. anybody who calls over the phone any any of your internet provider will never ever ask for your bank details over the phone especially your passcodes which is your telephone banking passcode which is a six digit number mm. and also making sure uh, not giving out your PIN number which is personal identification number your pin number that you use yes. for your debit cards yes. or your credit cards mm -hmm. So firstly, call the bank, provide as much as information, and secondly, call up the police and get the crime and reference report, number. Yes. So a uh, bank will request the victims for the crime reference number. So mm. once you report the incident to the police, you have to make sure you are kind of providing that crime reference number to the bank. And what the banks can do is firstly, straight away, just call, call up the bank, they can kind of stop any pending transactions mm. on the account again the, if the pending transactions on the card they will say you simply terms they say uh, again they have their own kind of again it takes three to five business days yes, for the card yes. payment to go through but if there's any wire transactions see if they can actually track the people mm. um, always make sure you uh, kind of call the bank first and stop stop the transaction and then stop change all your security details and uh, passwords and then um, to uh, and again if it's very intense then you what you have to do is you also have to call up the action fraud team okay now this is the one the, the action fraud team is nothing but a team which will help you uh, to place a victim alert on your on your account now is action fraud number uh, which you may be able to share with the viewers sure. is it a free number is it payable um, it's a O300 number, so some of the networks will be charged as a normal rate. Okay. So I will uh, confirm that number. It's called the Action Fraud Team number. Uh, it's uh, if you have a pen and a paper handy, um, you could ca definitely write that, write it down uh, yeah, near your be phone, great for the viewers so that uh, you don't panic on the situation. So this is the number for the Action Fraud Team in the UK, uh, and this is uh, the number. You can certainly go ahead and kind of Google search about it find out more information about it uh, to be more confident to know who you're actually speaking to. The number is 0300, so 123 2040. So I'll repeat the number is 0300 123 2040. So they're open from 8 a.m. to uh, 8 p.m. Monday to Friday. Okay. Um, and they're, they're not, they don't work on Saturday, Sundays, uh, unfortunately. 
but yes uh, but they do have an online mm. uh, app where you can actually contact them 24 7 as well so I think that's very handy as um, Hardeep has just suggested to us that if anyone is a victim of any sort of financial crime there is a number which you can call which as we we will again display on the bottom of the screen but the organization is called Action Fraud now for those people who are more vulnerable in the community the elderly uh, or unable to speak English try and get a family member or a friend that you may be able to trust and get that number there yes also, uh, in, when coming back to the number with uh, Action Fraud Team, so they have 28 different interpreters. So even oh, if you cannot, cannot speak English, uh, you have 28 different speakers where you can actually speak to someone in mm. Punjabi, you can speak someone in Hindi, Urdu. So they have got 28 different uh, I think that's languages. what I was trying to get at. So some of our community members whose English is not their first language sure. might be a worry that if I ring this number, who will I speak to? Will I be able to explain what I've gone through? Now, if that's what the situation is where they are, do provide interpreters, that, that is perfect. No, absolutely. That's uh, the that's first thing to do. Um, yeah. And oh, yes. so, Mr. Mr. Siri, you touched upon um, the growing trend of cyber crime. Now, if you could explain to the viewers what is cyber crime, because a lot of people are talking about it nowadays. There's a lot of security systems in place. But for me alike, what is cyber crime? Right. Cyber crime is nothing but uh, it's, to, it's a fraud that happens online. Mm. Cyber. So it's more likely, um, as we know, October month, which was the last month, was the Cyber Security Awareness Month. Mm. Um, and um, I'm sure there would be a lot of uh, advert on the TVs uh, mm, about kind, was, of, uh, yes. kind of uh, awareness, spreading awareness. So mm. Because, because yeah. what's happening here is now the fraud has been increased intensively. Now, in the last 15 years, uh, 2017 has been the highest number of uh, fraud in, term, in, um, in terms of uh, monetaries, in terms of money. So you'll be surprised to hear the number of the number of um, and this is the number that I'm only providing you in the United Kingdom okay so the amount that uh, fraudsters were actually for the fraud happen um, considering any kind of a retail fraud considering any wire transactions ATM online mm -hmm. fraud or any okay. tax fraud the amount was uh, 15 point Oh, 11 billion pounds Wow that's an extortionate amount of money that's absolutely and then and and it's all gone and with the forces and they've been enjoying you know <laughs> with on on the luxury holidays uh, your luxury goods um, uh, 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 you know uh, again uh, human trafficking and there's a lot of Ill illegal um, things that's being again also again there's another topic that I like to cover is in the money laundering again this is more more to do with uh, you know uh, that's how kind of terrorists get finance of whatever kind of uh, that's how that's how it kind of so it's it's a very intense kind of uh, uh, place where we can we where a person if a person is aware of uh, what he's actually her he or she is getting into mm. sometimes we th see some deals online so coming back to cyber uh, security so I will uh, like to kind of uh, keep uh, things very simple uh, in terms of uh, what do you need to do to yes. uh, kind of be safe on the internet mm. like because yeah. for our viewers yes. I think it's more of a um, ABC uh, rule where we just need to if we become victim of fr crime yes. or fraud or a scam what do we do especially if it's cyber crime because usually you're talking to a screen sure um, and <laughs> how does that work like I said to start off never do a Google search uh, if you're logging into your bank account uh, it can be any any bank uh, it could be anything to do with your banks mm -hmm. um, uh, logging into your account making a transaction make sure uh, you're not using Google you're actually using this actual web address okay. and yes. make sure you're using HTTPS S means a secured website secondly I would uh, request uh, viewers not to actually avoid using any transactions bank transactions in the public uh, uh, places which can be cafes uh, it could be a library, mm. it could be a train risk, stations, yeah. uh, restaurants, or hotels. Even if you're actually using, if you're traveling, for example, and mm -hmm. if you like to use your, if you want to connect to your hotel's Wi-Fi, mm. uh, make sure that you actually go to the reception and ask what is your actually Wi-Fi's name. Okay. So what yeah. happens is uh, the forsters, what they do is they can, they can actually change the Wi-Fi's name. For wow, example. Okay. Uh, for example, if I'm using an ABC, uh, say if I'm gone, if I've gone to McDonald's, for example, say they have they do a free Wi-Fi, 
So always make sure you're actually logged into the actual McDonald's Wi-Fi. So making sure that you're registered. Uh, what fraudsters do is they they can the the cyber security hackers. What they can do is they can actually kind of counterfeit another name of the same particular company and wow, then okay. and they then then they can see that the network is strong and kind of what we tend to do is we kind of to try to log into the networks mm -hmm. which is strong and then log in and and then that's how once you log in that means they have access to your whole your, of your page whatever you're doing on the account and they can kind of use your card details to make any big purchases that's pretty worrying and I think for the, the general public as well I think it's very important to take these essential tips on board Absolutely. Uh, that you've mentioned throughout the program and it's very uh, worrying that cybercrime is such a growing uh, area where many many people are falling um, victims of these and they do actually suffer detrimental losses whether it's financial absolutely um, emotional whichever yes. it may be now uh, even though many people of all ages and backgrounds are victims of uh, financial crime or fraud but i'm going back to older people because they are very overrepresented now Lee, you've mentioned about tips again those tips can be applied to them they can take them on board and use them of course but as you mentioned a few statistics now age uk back in, in march 2017 found 3.4 million incidents of fraud were reported however out of them 57 percent were cyber related wow. now, that's, that's a very high brilliant. amount of cyber related crimes absolutely. that take place yes now from your perspective as a financial crime officer how would you deal with this situation well, uh, banks are actually, um, well, not, not only banks, all the financial institutions are actually working hard uh, mm. to make sure uh, their account holders are safe. Uh, again, they do uh, spread awareness and yes. they do kind of uh, uh, spread, uh, making sure they are not being a victim. Again, we don't want, uh, end of the day, we don't want anybody to suffer loss mm. because again it's not only about the loss uh, it's Absolutely, about yeah. it's not about it's about stress uh, also with uh, there's a lot of um, time that's involved because to investigate a matter um, it takes at least um, again it depends from bank to bank. I don't have any specific number to give you because again it depends from mm. time to time frame yeah. again what pressure they're actually on because especially in the Christmas time um, especially in the month of November, December, because a lot of people do online mm. purchases, the crime rate goes really high. Well, well, keeping that in mind, as you've mentioned, the run up to Christmas, we have five weeks to go, uh, which is not a very long time to, to go sure. uh, before Christmas comes and then the new year comes in. So from your expertise, can you give us some top five tips right. on protecting oneself when it comes to cybercrime? Absolutely. So the first tip I would like to give you, the first, uh, for, first and foremost, a common type of another fraud is again say if a person visiting an ATM to withdraw some cash yes and especially with the elderly or it could be any age group make sure nobody's so shoulder surfing that means make sure there's nobody behind you looking at your pin number and all the time it's not only ATM even when you go to any kind of a, mm. a grocery stores could yeah. be any super stores anywhere you're using your kind of uh, cards make sure you cover your you cover your yeah. pin number with your hand okay that's the first tip and secondly never uh, there is a also called a distraction fraud mm. so if you're going to an ATM and somebody con and you're using your card uh, in the machine and put your pin number and somebody distracted you saying oh could you just help me with this or could you help me with that never get um, mm. get never get distracted just make sure you complete what you're doing and then proceed with it and then uh, the third thing I would like to say a uh, third tip is never ever give any information over the phone which could be which could be to do with your mother's maiden name your six digit passcode your pin number because a bank will never ever ask you for any security details Absolutely, yes. uh, also with the um, another coming back to the online security always make sure you never use your password as your pet's name because <laughs> this is how normally people, uh, people do, do yes, to, to remember always have different pin numbers for your different cards uh, and coming uh, back to your online thing um, always make sure your password is uh, including characters numbers and special characters like uh, like so a mixture, alpha a alpha mixture, numeric, yes. uh, so that it, it makes it ma it'll make strong and also mm. if you feel anything unusual activity make sure you change your password all the time 
and if you think you're you you might have been somebody would have seen your pin number change your pin number uh, okay. go to the atm and never ever write down your pin number anywhere in your purse in or in your store in your purse or anywhere in your phone because once you get your say wallet stolen the fraudster has everything what they need so never ever uh, write down your pin number because whenever the bank send you information on the card they strictly mention you saying do not write your pin number destroy it a lot of customers a lot of say account holders they don't get kind of uh, uh, money back because reason being they they don't follow the rules now bank will not bank bank will held these um, account holders liable reason oh, okay. being they've actually broke the rule so um, also uh, I would like to give you another tip so always invest in a very good antivirus software so whenever you're using your uh, cards online at even at your home make sure you download and uh, kind of use your um, antivirus could be uh, AVG or, or could be uh, you know McAfee or anything whichever but make sure you don't use the trial version invest some money on that so that your money is safe absolutely so there were very important top five tips for our viewers absolutely in regards to how we can protect ourselves now just very quickly um, before we um, take an exit from today's show um, um, Mr. Sira, what is your one kind of guidance to the public run up to Christmas? What advice would you give? Um, one advice that I'd like to give you, give all the viewers, be always be vigilant. Always never ever leave your, uh, especially ladies, when you're going to the uh, uh, cinemas or probably going to the restaurant or cafes, never ever leave your handbag. Take always, take always mm. your handbag with you. Always be vigilant. Always uh, and ever so whenever you get your card stolen or your wallet stolen or your purse stolen make sure you call the bank straight away make sure the uh, you inform them and call the police and ring the action fraud so that what they can do is they can actually place a victim alert on your account yes, absolutely, so especially yeah. when losing your ID documents this is another thing that I like to cover uh, before we wrap up uh, with the show uh, making sure whenever you lose your ID documents could be your passport or your driver's license mm. These are your main uh, documents and uh, make sure you call up action fraud um, and ask them to place a victim alert on the account what they can do is they can actually place a victim alert so that in future so if a foster applies for any kind of a financial uh, product could be a credit card or mortgage or a loan you will be first contacted because you'll have a password security the lenders will actually call up the person and make sure you know mm. call them and make sure was it you mr smith or was it you who actually and they will say no it wasn't so the, to, the main reason of doing this is to basically make sure your credit score is safe so your credit wouldn't wouldn't be affected so always make sure you're keeping vigilant always be uh, make sure the websites are safe so um, so these are the tips that I like to provide. Brilliant, thank you. thank you. So thank you so much for being on today's show and giving us some essential tips for the, for the viewers. Absolutely, As well my as pleasure. myself, I've, I've learned a few things that I'll have to make sure I do next time sure. to protect myself. Um, and that's all for today. And we'll be back next week and to bring on a, another specialist who will be talking in more depth about cybersecurity. Um, so until next week, thank you. Vai Gurji Ka Khalsa. Vai Gurji Ki Fateh.